Alright guys, well, it is a dark and stormy night. We're under a tornado watch here. <laughs> a tornado watch in the Finger Lakes of New York on this uh, gloomy... It is a Monday night. It is August 7th, 2023. And uh, now that I have finally finished my hellacious day being a uh, a vacation rental super host there's he waving to the folks uh, I can finally sit around and uh, do what I do about an hour a day and that is check in with the collapse of the planet but I want to thank my good friend Professor Elliot Jacobson who still has time for us little folk down here in the Domosphere with his newfound fame. Uh, Elliot Jacobson still has time to think of the of us little little small fry in the Domosphere. So uh, he has sent me this latest post from Jim Bendel. And guys, I think I've made it clear that I am a little bit conflicted about Jim Bendel and part of the reason because I don't think Jim Bendel is a very good writer. I mean, the last time I, I did a chronicle of the collapse, it, 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 his, his essay was so badly written, I didn't even know what he was talking about. But uh, I, I think... And, and I have not read his new book, okay? I have not, and I don't really have any plans to read Jim Bendel's new book, Breaking Together, but I, I, I think the gist, and I could have this completely wrong, I think the gist of what uh, Jim Bendel is saying is that Obviously, this civilization, this this modern global industrial <coughs> civilization and society, is going bye bye. That there is no hope for trying to preserve something that should not be preserved, known as this setup. That if I understand the man correctly. And I very well might not. I, you know, since I haven't read his book, I think that as much as Jim Bendel, that that I'm cheering him on as being a an hopium soaked apocalyptimist assassin, uh, and and bashing people like uh, you know all of these. Michael Mann and whoever this new chick, I can't remember her name, that's caused all of this uproar, getting all the Doomers panties in a wide on The Guardian. Sandy was reading her piece in, uh, recently. Uh, anyway, that, that chick and, and all of the Doomer bashing, and, and I really appreciate Jim Bendel labeling himself a Doomer and uh, defending the Doomers. And uh, th that aside, you, you know, Jim Bendel, uh, he is still, if I, if I understand it correctly, is clinging to his own hopium that after this civilization goes bye-bye, he still is clinging to some what I think is ridiculous hope that, um, and, and, I, and I'm not going to do the choking on hope during this rant, it would take three hours if I did, uh, he is still clinging to the hopium uh, that somehow, I guess, the survivors who come out of the bottleneck after the collapse of this civilization are going to learn some sort of lesson and at that point we're going to have the kumbaya moment and the whatever it looks like on the other side uh, that humans 
are, are, are going to come together and create some sort of sustainable uh, utopian society living in balance with the planet. I don't buy it for one second. Uh, I, I see zero evidence, not one iota of evidence to support the position that the, that the survivors of the collapse of this civilization are, 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 are going to, you, you know, uh, dance around the maypole. And uh, they're, they're, they're going to be just, uh, well... Uh, if you want to look, I mean, pretty much, I guess, like maybe Amazon Indians. Uh, I, I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, so I, I want to make it clear that I do not agree with Jim, Jim Mendel. You know, I want uh, every damn human on this planet to go bye-bye. You know, what, what, what I wish is that uh, everyone on this planet, including myself, including you and Jim Bendell and everyone else would go to sleep tonight and just never wake up, but minimally that the human race uh, goes, wakes up sterile tomorrow. Uh, okay, but uh, obviously if I sat around and the only people that I was talking to who were, you know, in the voluntary, or I might even call it the involuntary human extinction movement at this point, I probably wouldn't have a lot of people to quote. So I'm going just, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to give Jim Bendell a little bit of a pass. And uh, at least he, he is not harboring any illusion that this civilization is going, or, or that it should, uh, that it is, or that it should, or anyway, but my other problem with Jim Bendel is I just don't think he's that good of a writer. Uh, he, he's, his points, he does, it's, it, I just, you know, I, I don't think that he has... I, I honestly don't know what Jim's training is. I, I don't think that he is a, a, a journalist by trade. Uh, I don't think he's taken a lot of, um, you know, journalism, nonfiction... Uh, writing and editing courses. So whenever I read one of his essays, I start rewriting it. So what I'm going to bring to you, I'm not just going to read this essay. Uh, for one thing, it's too long. I'm just going to do kind of a mashup. And if I were Jim Bendell's copy editor and trying to rearrange this uh, this essay, that's what you're getting, uh, which means I'm not even going to start uh, till the second half of it. I will put the link on here. I encourage you to read it the way he wrote it. Uh, I encourage you to do as I say, not as I do, and go out and buy his brand new book, Breaking Together. But uh, which where I'm sure he elucidates a lot of these ideas. So this is Sam Mitchell's um, voluntary human extinction movement cheerleader doing a mashup copy editing of uh, Jim Bendell's latest. I guess this, yeah, this is just from his, his own website, jimmendel.com, which he has uh, titled, Let's Tell the Mood Splainers, the Mood Splainers, M-O-O-D-S-P-L-A-I-N-E-R-S. Let's tell the Mood Splainers they are wrong and then get back to work. Okay, 
Uh, this is just me. If I were Jim or if I were Jim's editor and he was introducing a new word, mood splainer, what I would want to do before diving into the article is I would want to know what the hell a mood splainer is. Unfortunately, it's about two-thirds of the way through the article before he gives this long, complicated definition. So we're going to start with the definition of a mood of mood splaining, and then back up, and then go ahead. And anyway, so some of the segues might not be perfect since Jim Mendel has not hired me to be his copy editor. Anyway, take it away, Jim Mendel. <clears throat> mood splaining is the practice of telling us, in this case, doomers, how we should feel for the good of ourselves and society. It may arise when people are anxious about feeling anxious and want certain ideas and people to be discredited so they might feel less anxious. <clears throat> like all experiential avoidance, where people suppress and deny their emotions, this can lead to illogical ideas as well as angry and hateful attitudes. An industry of mood splainers is funded by companies foundations and NGOs, non-governmental organizations, who want the public to feel calm enough not to rebel and disrupt the systems that are causing catastrophic damage to our living home. They, the mood splainers, want us the Doomers, to believe that technology, top experts, and elites will sort things out so that we keep on working, shopping, borrowing, and saving while tolerating losing our quality of life, our freedom, and our power, you know, not to mention a livable planet. So that is the definition. So now I'm going to go back up a few paragraphs and we are going to uh, flesh this out a little bit and then we're going to wind up with what to say when you're confronted by a moon splainer. Okay, uh, so let's talk about, we're going to start right here. We're going to talk about mood splainers and the H word. Mood splainers like to talk about, huh, they like to talk about huh, hope as a wonderful value. Yet many ancient wisdoms see hope as an affliction. I remember uh, Elliot Jacobson talking about this very idea, you know, hope uh, being, uh, you know, one of the, probably the queen of Pandora's box. Anyway, uh, many ancient wisdoms see hope as an affliction. An affliction. In my recent talk to a cultural festival in Amsterdam, I cited the Buddha saying that there are three kinds of people in the world. There is one that is hopeful, another who is hopeless, and another who has done away <coughs> with hope. Ah! Damn! Another that has done away 
with hope. This is not to be confused with hopeless. Another who has done away with hope to instead focus on being fully attentive, kind, and wise in the present situation. And we all know what the present situation is now, which is why you need to do away with hope. But I don't know what is blown up. <coughs> what in the hell has blown up my nose there, guys? Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to plow on. Mood splaining involves eloquent practitioners who have the necessary funding and connections to be heard often through mainstream media. You can tell that theirs is a, I don't know what this means, I have no idea that theirs is a professional comms C-O-M-M-S operation. Never heard the term a professional comms operation. Uh, as they don't provide their reader with any names of the people, initiatives, or concepts that they criticize, that means their readers cannot easily find out more for themselves. <clears throat> The commercial interests behind moonsplaining are important to recognize. There is now a huge faction of capital that wants to limit the environmental agenda to promoting renewable energy, nuclear power, and electrical products like cars. There is also a huge professional sector of, quote, climate users who are driven to have a successful career with a green sheen. They are joined by a wider sustainable development sector of hundreds of thousands of professionals who appear to be compulsively lying to each other to ignore the data on what's really happening. It is extremely worrying for democracy and good governance globally that the mood splainers are now backed up by the censorship teams in the big tech companies who shadow ban content on climate, and I would say other issues, and we don't need to go on the issue, the king of the shadow banning content on climate that does not align with the capitalist friendly eco-modern view of the future. For years, their climate fact-checking outfits do not even bother to reply to internationally renowned climatologists who criticize their shadow banning activities. Thus, the general public is left misinformed, less radical, and more compliant for incumbent power. Uh, this is it, Rebecca Solnit is the new queen of, I never heard of this woman, never heard of her, came out of nowhere in the Guardian, and now uh, she is queen of the Doomer Bashers. As Rebecca Solnit is associated with the term mansplaining, oh, I was inspired to start using uh, the term mood splaining. That is partly because there is a clear uh, parallel. Now we have a term for the practice so we can critique it more clearly. And that's when he uh, finally goes and, and defines mood 
splaining. Okay, and, and this is where I diverge a little bit from Jim, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it in here. Instead of cowardice on climate reality, many people are responding in a very different way. They are constituting a people's environmentalism and what I call a freedom-loving response to collapse, the subtitle of my book. It involves letting go of familiar but failing systems of comfort and security to begin to find mutually beneficial ways of living with all life, including each other. Such a freedom-loving response to collapse arises from the knowledge that it was the manipulation of hearts and minds that drove such wholesale destruction, and so liberating our true natures is part of the response. And this is my fundamental uh, disagreement with Jim Bendell. Uh, I, I uh, certainly uh, agree that our hearts and minds have been um, manipulated to drive such wholesale destruction, but I do not uh, for one second agree with Jim Bendell that liberating our true natures is part of the response. Uh, I was reading this uh, excellent on-target essay yesterday from that man, oh no, I have already forgotten his name, Willie, Dr. William Hearn, uh, talking about the true nature of humans. Well, anyway, you can listen to that, but I'm not going to sit here and debate Jim Bendell. This is his rant, not mine. Uh, okay, where was I? Anyway, okay. When current leaders, you know, back, back to things I do agree with Jim on. When current leaders speak in a superficially confident manner on subjects, that they have no psychological or sociological understanding of, they remind us of how unfit most top climatologists are for a role in helping societies make sense of the predicament humanity now faces. <clears throat> uh, la, 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 la. Anyway, uh, then it gets, uh, now this is where, uh, <laughs> I, 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 guys, I, I was really going to try not to sit here and get in a debate with Jim Bendell, so you can read this for yourself. I'm not going to sit here and, and read out what this man uh, thinks the, the future could look like if we could just get rid of the blue meanies and people really understood how doomed we are, when people really understand how doomed we are. It ain't going to be kumbaya, Jim. Anyway, okay, but this is really what I wanted to get to, the more fun part of the story. All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to skip over uh, Jim Bendell's own brand of hopium about the future and look at where we are now, between now and Kumbaya. But for now, the mood splainers will dominate a mass media to downplay what one and a half C global warming means 
for small island states, as well as the multi-bread basket failures that are likely to occur within a few years of that level of warming, the risk of tipping points beginning to cascade and the already severe consequences of existing heating levels. Therefore, in order to help you, yes, you, spot and then challenge their arguments, I have reduced a list of their, the moon, the mood splainers, typical claims, and why they can be rejected. So anyway, this is whenever you hear a mood splainer, if, if one of these clueless moron, hopium soaked apocalyptimist ever says this to you, this is Jim Bendel's advice of what to say back to them, or you will most likely be saying this to yourself reading a mainstream media article. Okay, <clears throat> mood splainer. We can't know the future of climate change for certain. Doomer, we certainly know what's happening already and the trajectory we are already on. Mood splainer, scientists are undecided on how bad it will become for societies. Doomer, most scientists are not trained or incentivized to integrate from outside their specialisms, specialisms, I think he meant specialties, but hundreds who attempt that are concluding societal collapse is the most likely scenario or underway, you know, underway right now. Mood splainer. Technology is amazing and should not be underestimated. Doomer. Technology cannot fix multi-system collapse and it is a form of fearful worldview defense to believe in techno salvation. Mood splainer. The kids are going to change everything. Doomer. Look at the news from the PlayStation riot. Well, that was Sam Mitchell Doomer. Jim Bendel Doomer about the kids are going to change everything. I've heard that claim from adults since I was a kid. Unfortunately, protesting teenagers sometimes evolve into salespersons for pseudo-green business projects and even ongoing war. Mood splainer. People go green when they believe it will make a difference. Doomer. If we are citizens first, not consumers, and despite the neoliberal experts obsessing over personal consumption, the environmental predicament was, is, and always will be a political one, inviting us to act politically in all as aspects of our lives once we become more aware of the truth. Mood splainer. We can't lose her. We can't lose her. We can't lose her. Uh oh and undermine people's commitment. Doomer, or at least Jim Bendel's version of Doomer. Conversely, our passions are unleashed by recognizing the full 
destructiveness of dominant systems and elites as evidenced by the last five years of radical climate activism by people who woke up to the true nature of our predicament. I'm not going to get in a, in a debate with uh, Jim Bendell that the last five years of climate activism have done exactly zero on any level any more than the Paris Agreement to change the trajectory of this climate and this planet to move the needle one inch. In fact, I said I wasn't going to debate Jim. I'm actually seeing these climate activists alienating uh, people who used to agree with them. Okay. Uh, mood splainer. And I've heard the version of this one. You know, that is all the doomers' fault. We must not create a self fulfilling prophecy. Quote, and this is my favorite doomer response to come on. This is the most I have sneezed. <coughs> I have not sneezed one time today until I came into this tiny house. I have not sneezed one time. All right, this is my number one favorite uh, quote of this whole article. This will be a be the title. So when some clueless moron mood splainer tells you we mustn't create a self-fulfilling prophecy, the correct Doomer response is blaming realist for being proven right is idiotic and so reveals a panicked, illogical mind that needs help with processing emotions. <laughs> if, if ever uh, Jim Bendel, that is my favorite Jim Bendel quote. It won't all fit into a hundred character headline, but most of it will. One more time. Three cheers. Jim Bendel blaming realist for being proven right is idiotic and so reveals a panicked, illogical mind that needs help with processing emotions. Okay. Mood splainer. We can't risk anarchy. Doomer. Again. Jim Bendell, not Sam Mitchell. Voluntary self-governance will be better than constant manipulation and control with the latter at fault for the current predicament by enforcing expansionist and consumptive attitudes and behaviors through capitalism. As Dr. William Hearn was pointing out yesterday on the on hum, humanity's territorial imperative we were, uh, humans were, um, let's see, were creating our current predicament by enforcing expansionist and consumption and consumption attitudes centuries, if not millennia, before capitalism or even money was ever invented. Okay, I am with William Hearn on this one. The humans terri territorial, uh, I just said it and I've already forgotten it. I, I, I absolutely love it. All right, and one more. Mood splainer. We should have more faith in humanity and or more faith in God. 
Doomer. Our faith in humanity and or the divine means we trust our freedom to care for each other and nature once freed from the cowardly and narcissistic offers officers of the current systems of power. And to wrap up this long piece, which I only read the last third of, sometimes my answer to the not too late PR professionals is simply, thank God it's too late for your avoidance, your nasty attitudes towards realist, and your attempts to reinforce existing power. For years, I avoided being too confrontational with the mood splainers, but this matter is real life with massive implications for all of us and not just some subject to try and be knowledgeable about in a self-consciously polite way. It is time to start making some choices and living by them. Let's do good stuff. Promote others doing good, but don't stand aside as people with power continue to deny reality and thereby increase the potential harm. Let's tell the mood splainers they are wrong and then get back to the real work. So I will give uh, Jim Bendel half of an amen. Uh, You know, it's gotten to the point where I, I think Michael Campy, despite our differences on one subject, uh, that 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 Michael Campy and I are are, are probably uh, in, in the most radical Doomer uh, camp on, on this whole thing about adaptation, Michael. I guess. And Medium.com uh, did his update, uh, his second part, I believe, of Adaptation Zero. There is not one scintilla of evidence anywhere that I or Michael Campy can see uh, to agree with, uh, with, with Jim Bendel or anybody else that humanity is going to adapt, to be able to adapt with the shit show coming down on this planet. But I don't think that Michael Campy agrees with me that humans need to go extinct. The sooner the better. I am in a, a lonely camp on that. I calls them as I sees them. Oh, I'm going to come back with a very short PS to this because uh, all of that reminded me about when clueless moron mood splainers, even here in the Doomosphere, come up w with this unadulterated horseshit. The earth will be fine. What your response should be, but I'm going to make that since that since it wasn't part of this, I will come back with a very short video on that. Get that off my chest. Coming up in one minute. Bye, guys.